That's the music of the pianist Ben Rosenblum, who's with us in the studio today. Uh, the tune, the track was called "Because It's Raining," and it's on um, Ben's new CD, newish CD, instead. <laughs> and on that, the bass player was Curtis Lundy. The drummer was Billy Hart, so he was in some pretty heavy company. But we're in some pretty heavy company right now because we're here with Ben Rosenblum in the studio, and he's got his accordion. He didn't bring his piano, but he did <laughs> in a way. He in a partly he did. He brought his accordion, and he rips on that thing too. So welcome today, Ben. And nice, thanks for coming in. Oh, thank you for having me, Corey. Yeah. So tell us about this new uh, because it's raining was one of the, was one track from uh, instead. Tell us. Tell us. Um, a little bit about the CD. It came out this year, and um, and yeah, I I recorded it last summer. It came out this March, and it's uh, my first full length album as a leader. So it has a lot of my oldest, most uh, matured compositions. It's full of things that I wrote, you know, over the past ten years, as well as some tracks by pianists who are heroes of mine, like Sonny Clark and other musicians who are heroes like Charlie Hayden. And it's, I think, very straight ahead, very influenced by a hard bop era, jazz. But I wanted to do something for my first album with uh, you know, musicians who were there in that era, in my comfort zone, you know, music that just feels good and that is melodic and has some interesting harmonic choices, but at the same time really just makes you want to groove to it. And I really couldn't have asked for better company than Curtis and Billy. Yeah. And Curtis especially has been a longtime mentor of mine. I've been playing with him and his group on and off for four or five years. Right. So. And you have a steady gig with him, right? Yeah, every Thursday. As we speak. <laughs> yeah. Thursday nights. Where is that? Start plugging right away. Oh, oh my know? goodness. Like, okay. I mean, that's, you know, you're playing with Leonard Harper and Curtis Lundy that every week. True. I mean, I think that deserves mention. Yeah. Every week. So uh, this would be at the Vanguard? Where no. is it? At the Blue Note? Yeah. Where is it? No, we play at a community spot in Edgewater, New Jersey, which is right across the water, right across from the Upper West Side. The restaurant's called Orama. We're there 7.30 to 10.30 every Thursday night. Yeah. Is, is it a Japanese place or a steakhouse? What is um, it? <laughs> somewhere in between those two. Yeah. I don't really know what it is, to be honest. Right. Mediterranean, I guess, is the best. Uh, O-R-A-M-A, Orama. Okay, Orama in Edgewater, New Jersey. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's incredible that you're playing with those guys. and uh, Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's, yeah. v it's very special for me because Winard's another person who I started playing with when I was pretty young and inexperienced, and he taught me a lot. I mean, how old are you? Right now, I'm 24. Oh my God, and you're playing with all these guys, right? And you're mm -hmm. at Columbia, you were in the Columbia Juilliard uh, Musicians Program, right? Yeah, I graduated last year, 2016, from this joint program they have, so I was taking classes at both schools. Meaning a lot of academic classes at Columbia and then a lot of music at Juilliard, or what? How did yeah, that work? something like that. I did, yeah. uh, I was a philosophy major at Columbia, so I was taking mostly reading and writing classes at Columbia. And then playing a lot at Juilliard, though I did play a lot of music at Columbia and, you know, had a lot of very close musician friends who I'm still playing with from Columbia. Right. In fact, the way you and I met was I wrote a kind of a human interest piece for the Times on this jazz, quote unquote, jazz suite that you lived in. You guys yes. all got a dorm suite together, <laughs> a dozen or more uh, music, jazz musicians, and you guys would you know, kind of jam together day and night in between classes or in between naps and, and sleep and that kind of thing. And I, I thought that was pretty cool that you could like kind of live with your musical friends and musical collaborators, that type of thing. Oh, it's so yeah. special. And, you know, I'm happy to report that it's still going strong with the younger classmen now that I'm out of it. And also the people who I was living with are all living together. So we've kind of created our own jazz suite outside of Columbia. Again. Oh, so a lot of so. guys took apartments together? And that yeah, type of thing? exactly. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. And where else do you gig? Um, you also at Katana, with kind of like a piano room yeah, I, kind of place? Yeah, I uh, have a solo piano. I'm doing Tuesday, October 3rd and Tuesday, October 17th, solo piano at the Katano, and then November 1st, which is a Wednesday with my trio. The owner there, Gino, is an amazing guy, and he's someone who's really built the jazz up at the Katano, and it's a beautiful room with a gorgeous Steinway piano, and I'm very lucky and happy that he is a fan of mine and that he wants me there. 
So. Right. So that that's on Park Avenue. And what's the cross street? What's the park? Thirty eighth. Yeah, Park and Thirty Eighth Catano Jazz. Um, so I see you have this uh, this accordion with you. And what do you play jazz on it? Do you play m many different styles? I and, mean, yeah. so I'm a jazz pianist through and through, and I think that's my approach to the accordion is as a jazz pianist. Right. But the repertoire on the accordion is a lot of different things. My teacher on the accordion is Brazilian, so he's taught me a lot of Brazilian repertoire, and then. You know, I play some klezmer music on this, some folk music from Eastern Europe and Balkans. I was just playing in a Moroccan venue last night on the accordion. Right. You know, How but... How that go? I mean, so these, you play a lot of like, what jazz musicians would call ethnic gigs, or different styles yeah, from different Yeah, different countries. styles, different countries, you know, but my approach to it is always as a jazz musician, so... It's like, it's the fun of it is taking these different forms and improvising on them and making them kind of into jazz tunes, jazz standards. Yeah. So I literally ran into you yesterday kind of <laughs> randomly and you had this with you and you were, you were cool enough to take it out and show me some stuff with it. So, I mean, that kind of, so last night I got back in touch with I said, why don't I just have this guy on the radio today, you know? <laughs> so, you know, what I wanted to say is that you, you can do what you want, man, with this thing. You can either play a, a tune and we'll, or you can just give example. I don't know how if you you know. I mean, because what, what was cool with me is that you kind of just talked me through a few, you know, a, a different styles that you try to that you try to play on this thing. Whatever your whatever your um, desire is. I mean, you can play a tune on this thing, a couple tunes, or you can kind of play for listeners what you know the kind of different things that you uh, you know work on with this instrument. You know? Well, maybe I'll know. start with yeah. a tune and then I'll talk a little bit about the accordion because I think the accordion is maybe the most misunderstood instrument yeah. in America, at least. In a lot of other countries, it's a very popular, well-accepted instrument. But in America, it's often seen as this very, like, uh, you know, El folk. El campy and old-fashioned, yeah, maybe. Yeah, circus kind of, yeah, you know. Right. And, like, the accordion has a lot of expressive possibility, and there are some great jazz musicians like Maria Schneider who are including the accordion in their groups now in ways that really showcase the different tonal and textural possibilities of the accordion because the accordion has such a wide range from up there to, you know, and all these different timbres, very sweet, very brash. You know, it can get a lot of different sounds. So there's so much, if you're creative with how you use different sounds, there's so much that you can do with it. Right. I see you have different stops. Bassoon, uh, accordion. Yeah, bandonian, harmonium. I mean, Musette. they're like uh, stops on an organ. Oh, flute, clarinet. Because right. there are different reeds on each note. You know, and the different stops trigger different combinations of reeds. So whether it's a single note like this, or maybe a bunch of reeds at the same time like this. So, yeah. you know, and all of these create different textures. And the stop names are just kind of to approximate. I mean, I don't think anybody would say... That sounds like a flute, but it's more, you know, to give you a sense of the timbral palette that you're going to enter in. Right. Okay. But, yeah, I can start with uh, something that I was playing last night. It's kind of like a tango. It has klezmer roots, and I put the jazz into it. It's called Shen Vidi. And it's, uh, you know, I think it's representative of a lot of the different things I'm bringing in when I'm trying to play this stuff. Right. Let's see.
Nice, Ben Rosenblum, jazz pianist and apparently accordionist. <laughs> and that was tell us again. It was obviously a tango. Was it? Was it a Argentinian? Was it? Brazilian? I mean, that's part of actually the Yiddish songbook, which is a you know, yeah. it's like it shows the kind of cross cultural influences because you know the Yiddish songbook is taking this you know tango rhythm, making it their own. But I was drawing out more of the tango of it you know, with the rhythms, yeah. and then adding some jazz improvisation over the top. So. Right. Yeah, no, you also play some pretty heavy jazz on that because you were <laughs> ripping some lines uh, on that thing as well. So uh, maybe I'll ask you in a minute to maybe like kind of thrill listeners with with your chops, jazz chops on the accordion because that really sounds, playing jazz on the accordion definitely sa sounds different. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, Yeah, so and you also probably play like a melodica too, like like John Baptiste plays yeah, on the Colbert yeah, yeah, Show, yeah, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. I mean, I think... Anything with a keyboard. Yeah, anything with a keyboard. I've dabbled on the organ, though I wouldn't say I'm an organist, you know, but it, it's all... It all opens up different possibilities and it uses the same kind of basic technique, you know. Yeah. So... Anything to get different kind of tonal palettes. I mean, the reason I get so excited about the accordion is that it has some possibilities that aren't possible on the piano in terms of, you know, being able to do repeated notes quickly or crescendo through a note or do vibrato. Or so you're shaking it now, right? Yeah. yeah. Or, Different yeah. things like that that are just you can't do on the piano, so it's like you get a lot of more of an expressive quality, kind of like the human voice, right? Because you have bellows, yeah, exactly. like like instead of lungs, let's say, <laughs> but in, but never the yeah, nevertheless, the, you want to hit something louder or softer, and it's really a physical movement of squeezing those bellows, yeah. like the way you would squeeze you know your, your lungs essentially unconsciously, like <laughs> absolutely, right. Yeah, except the left hand is different. I mean, you're not the playing left hand. hand piano, forming chords like you would with your right hand on on a piano keyboard. It's a series of buttons and there and there's different chords and the, and it's a whole other thing to wrap your musical head yes. around, right? And approaching yes, the definitely. Yeah. It, that's that's uh, been definitely a big challenge for me as I've started to grow more as an accordionist and really kind of embrace this as something that I do in my professional life. So you know, that's where I've really you know, tried to grow the most, and I'm still trying, and where I get the most help from my teacher, right. Vitor, Vitor Gonzalez, who's uh -huh. a Brooklyn guy. I see. But, you know, he, you know, there are different accordions. Mine has chords, you know, on buttons, which is kind of the standard. But there are some accordions that are, like, free bass, 
so that all the buttons are individual notes, so you can form voicings the way you would on the piano as well. Right. But I'm not there yet. <laughs> so do me a favor. Just play a sample, some kind of progression, whether it's a blues or some kind of cycling thing. We're just using the left hand, just so listeners can hear how you would kind of voice like a jazz left-handed piano player hmm. with the buttons. I mean, how do you approach that? Um, I mean, Let's see. I mean, or do you walk a bass line, or do you... Uh, I don't think I'm really good enough to do that on the left hand yet but you could the thing about the le the accordion in general is that there's very little attack so you kind of have to you know because the note to drone more of a drone. goes yeah. in pretty smoothly to get an attack you kind of have to fake it yeah. So you don't get that same kind of thing as on the... The percussive the bass, bass line, right. exactly. Yeah. But you can do kind of stride things. Pretty easily because yeah. of the way things are laid out with the 1-5 right next to each other and then you have different chords and then you can combine different buttons to create new chords yeah so. dissonance extensions yeah. one chord on top of another and this exactly. kind of thing right yeah huh. i guess that would be like an alter yeah yeah <laughs> so. and then in the right hand i mean you like you can rip i mean you for oh, me, yeah. you just like you rip donna lee you know a charlie parker oh, yeah. head like so fast <laughs> Yeah, it's just like a piano, you know. Yeah. And that's where I think the accordion's really underexplored. There are some amazing people who do it, but they don't get the attention that they really deserve because, you know, it's a reed instrument like any other. You wow. get all of yeah. those, you know, you can get a lot of the different articulation and phrasing and sound, and, you know, it's... Uh, you know, there's a lot of vocal quality, but for some reason, people don't think of the accordion as an instrument that has that potential. They yeah. think of it as, you know, you yeah. know, that kind of I thing. Little polkas or... Yeah. But it can do all that stuff, right. too. Well, play us, play us something. Play us a jazz something, and if know. you would, you know, anything I'll, that I'll you might... I'll do blues. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Let's see. Nice. Billy's Bounce, I guess. Ben Rosenblum <laughs> playing the blues on an accordion. That's incredible. Oprah 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 Bob. Bob. Oh, yeah, Bob. And then yeah, Oprah Bob. I finished with the Kenny Barron blues and then again. Is that right? So, yeah, but all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Now I see what. Man, comping with the left hand on that thing is is way it's difficult. I see coming from a pianist background like you are. Yeah. I mean, you you really have to 
work the bellows and all. And while you're playing with the right hand, the left hand has not only to be playing the chords, but working the bellows. And it's it's just a whole different thing than playing on the piano. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's something that I'm still not the most strong at. But it's one of those things where the right hand and the left hand are sharing the bellows, so they're sharing the same dynamics. So if you play loud in one hand, it's loud in the other hand. I see, right. You so can't you, play a soft left-hand comp and yeah. a right hand like, like the piano. Like right? You can change the switches so that you have the loud switch on one hand and soft on the other, but that's as far as you can go. So it becomes a lot about figuring out how to get out of the way of the hands, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right. not really you're playing them. Yeah, yeah, too much together that would get in the way. You figure out how to play, you know, in the in between. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me something, you know, once in a while in New York City, you, you, in the subway or somewhere in a park, you'll see some old guy playing this plays into the stereotype of the accordion. Yes. But you'll see some guy from Greece, from wherever, the Middle East, oh, and he'll yeah. be playing a very typical style on the accordion because it goes so it goes so heavily into different styles of music. Uh, yeah. Do you ever find someone who's just ripping in a certain style, and this is what he knows, and he you know he'll oh, play gypsy music, whatever, absolutely. Romanian? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I I recently performed at something called Accordions Around the World in Bryant Park. There were probably like fifty accordionists on the day that I was there. Per, different you know, genres and backgrounds performing. And they do this every year in Bryant Park. Yeah. And, you know, every time that I listen to an accordionist, it would be a completely different genre. And it was crazy hearing, like, somebody just do Zydeco in a way that was so legit and authentic, you know, but they might not even know, you know, anything about jazz or about, you know, different world musics. And then, you know, I'd hear some Bulgarian player, you know, with amazing ornamentation, but, you know, then I'll hear a jazz player and they'll have all this harmony and they, you know, there's very little overlap a lot of the time. You know, the people specialize. I wish I was able to do all of these different things and it's kind of you know as a jazz musician that's kind of what you do you dabble in a lot of things and bring it all in and make it your own thing right but you plus know, you can get more gigs if you know more ah, styles right yeah that's true right. you yeah. know i just you know pull out a little bit of like you know uh let's see <laughs> And, you know, but I... What would that be now? That, that was Bulgarian versus, like, uh, I don't know. Some Irish yep. jig yep. versus... Yeah. I had an Uncle Bill uh, Hollihan who played the accordion completely by ear, and he could oh, play really? anything you mentioned, you know, like, yeah, I don't think he had a day of uh, music theory in his life, but he had a great <laughs> ear, and he could play... And he was a sanitation yeah. man. That's amazing. Yeah, he was a dustman. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's incredible to me and you know, this is this isn't even talking about like the people who play classical accordion and really like can play, you know, as virtuosic pieces as like a list or Chopin on the piano, you know, and they're doing it on the accordion. You can't tell me you haven't done that though. I mean, you know, you you can do you could probably do that. I mean, that, right? with I mean, enough practice, but it's all yeah. about the left hand and they do the free bass and you know, yeah. play Bach, like, uh, you know, two-part, three-part inventions, you know, doing the bass part wow. on the left hand, yeah. and right. that that's amazing. It's, it's yeah. funny because, you know, as a jazz musician, I can kind of uh, get around doing a lot of that stuff because I'm improvising and I have that background from the piano. But, you know, sometimes people come up to me and they're like, oh, I never got as far as you did on the accordion, I was only doing, like, Bach, two-part inventions, and I'm just like, oh, man, <laughs> I shouldn't yeah. tell them, like, you know, I never did all that training. Right. Yeah, you're still on that <laughs> stuff? Oh, yeah, hey, you'll, you'll be... Keep working, kid. Keep practicing. Okay, so Ben, Ro ben Rosenblum's in the studio with us, WBAI 99.5, WBAI.org, and um, Ben uh, Rosenblum is a jazz pianist who also, obviously, as you can hear, plays a little bit of accordion. And um, you can catch him if you can get over to Edgewater, New Jersey on, thir on this tomorrow or any Thursday evening, pretty much. He plays uh, a gig at Orama, O-R-A-M-A, -A, Orama Restaurant in Edgewater. It's right on the water on the Hudson. And um, 
I used to go there when it was a sushi place years ago. Yeah, it's I an know, incredible right? view. It's like a glass, you know, a beautiful view of the Hudson. A better view of Manhattan than in Manhattan. Yeah. I'm actually say. I'm yeah. missing this Thursday, sadly. I'm playing a tango gig on the accordion. Oh, really? Hilariously. But You're I'll blowing be off Curtis Lundy for a tango gig on the accordion? <laughs> All right. But, well, anyway, he plays with Curtis there. Lundy. And I'll be there every Thursday in October. So Curtis definitely. Lundy, Winard Harper on drums, Curtis Lundy on bass, mm, and uh, that's Orama on Thursdays. Uh, ben Rosenblum plays the piano there. And you can also catch him fairly often, a few times a month, at Kitano. Uh, jazz Room of Park Avenue and 33rd Street, right? Uh, 38th. 38th. Yeah. Okay. I'll be there Tuesday, October 3rd. So I think that's less than a week away. All right. Point. Anyways, you can find all, a lot of this information on his website, Ben Rosenblum Music. That's Ben R Rosenblum is R-O-S-E-N-B-L-U-M, Ben Rosenblum Music dot com.